It seems fewer of us are willing to become have-a-go heroes. Figures obtained by the policy exchange show that in London, citizens' arrests have halved in the past three years to 1,800 in the last year. Policy exchange is now calling for the creation of crime prevention office to replace neighbourhood officers. Well, with us now are the author of the report, uh, Edward Boyd, and Shanali Rutre uh, from Witness Confident, uh, a charity that aims uh, to confront the walk on by culture. Welcome to you both. Now, let's just get it straight first of all. What is a citizen's arrest? I mean, I mean what could people do? Sure. Well, part of the issue is that not enough people know what a citizen arrest is at the moment. This is a situation where, let's say there's an officer not available and you see something like um, somebody being racially abused, say, on a bus or a potential domestic violence issue where it looks like, uh, say, a man is about to hit a woman outside of a pub that you're in. Um, it's, it, it's a situation where a citizen would intervene and uh, as citizens we have the uh, ability in, in, in law to intervene and to arrest the person uh, and hold them until the police get there. So you, you, I mean, obviously, I mean, if they say, well, I'm not going to wait here, I'm going to run away, are they committing an offence? Um, it's, 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 it's not an offence, I think. It's a very difficult thing to do, which is why we think people need to be educated. And there's a good reason why not many people have done it, because I don't think that many people actually know what it involves uh, and, and how they do it if they felt that it was appropriate. But people used to do it in the past. Why are people doing it less and less? Well, there's a combination of factors. I think people today are often uh, more, more fearful that somebody might be holding a knife uh, and they might get endangered themselves. But there's also issues around uh, community cohesion and I think people's sense of public duty to get involved and to support the police in the difficult job they have in, in, in suppressing and, and, and tackling crime. Shanona, you're from Witness Confident. You, you, this is a charity that tries to confront this, this walk on by behaviour. I mean, you must understand that often people feel scared for their own safety and that's often a, a large reason why somebody won't intervene. Presumably you're not, you're not encouraging people to go into situations that they, they're scared of. Yes, and I think that's a really important point that you as an individual should never put yourself in a situation where you're uh, scared. Um, and I think we need to look at other ways in which individuals and members of the public can engage with um, crimes and reporting. As a charity we were set up uh, primarily to encourage people to challenge this walk on well, give us some examples of what, what sort of things do people do? Well, um, first of all, uh, practical things are everyone's got a smartphone now. Rather than put yourself in, the, in danger, maybe film the incident and then report it to the police. Um, we're looking at ways, different ways in which you can engage with police. We recently launched a map called streetviolence.org which gets 500 hits a day from Londoners, which shows that the public are really willing to engage and the police need to start uh, communicating with the public using different technology. One of, one of the things that the, that the report suggests is, is that people could go to citizen police academies to perhaps give them more confidence yeah. in learning about, about the law and this kind of thing. I mean, what's different about members of the public doing that to, to the kind of people who get involved and become special constables, for example? Well, let me outline what citizen police academies are all about. Mainly they'd have two roles. The, the first one would be about making sure that members of the public uh, did all they could to stay safe. So, for example, it's it's about making sure that you have the advice to make sure that your home is as burglary proof as possible or if say you're walking home from night alone after work in the dark you do everything to make sure that you minimize the chances that you become a victim of crime the, the second thing we look for citizen police academies to do would be to where somebody feels it's appropriate to intervene where there's a difficult situation um, that they would be given both the confidence but also the knowledge about how you might do so effectively so you could do it safely minimizing the risk to yourself and actually look to defuse some of these situations that might uh, arise. So now, now, I've got to put it to you that you know, if you do get caught up as a witness in a trial, I mean, it's, it's happened to me, it's a real pain because uh, you have to go through work according to lawyer's time, lawyer deposition, then you turn up and the trial's postponed and, uh, and all the rest of it. I mean, one can understand why people don't uh, want to give uh, their details to the police or get involved in this way. Yeah, um, that's completely borne out by the research that we did when we first started up. It's actually that it would be a ha the hassle factor which stops people from uh, coming forward. And then comes uh, fear and it won't make a difference. There's no sign anything's been done by that, about that by the authorities. Yeah, there? and I think this is where we've got to start looking at the solutions now rather than in 2020, which I know that's what the report is really trying to get at. But uh, I think we need to really encourage people to uh, use the new technology and get the Met Police.
What There's also a disconnect, isn't there, between what people perceive to be the level of street violence and what the actual level is. Yeah. What is the difference and, and, and how much do you think that's putting people off getting involved? Well, according to our statistics and research on street violence issues in the British Crime Service survey, we think about 40% of crimes go unreported. So um, we need to get that information also um, made easily for individuals to report. Okay. Shinoda Rutre and Edward Boyd, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Over the north of Bay.